What is the catechumenate and why should you be a part of it? I'm gonna give you seven reasons. Number one, the historic biblical faith is different than everything else. It is not just a religion of the law. Laws are understandable, predictable, and reasonable and easily understood. You try to be good and hopefully you get some benefits. The historic biblical faith is different. God's ways are not our ways. His ways are goodness, mercy, and grace for those who don't deserve it. John 3 verse 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave. In the Greek, utos, he gave in this way. He gave his only son. This faith is a faith that God gives. This is a faith that is created by a miracle. The miracle comes by the preaching of the gospel, which comes to us through the word and the work of Jesus. And it gives us shocking new life by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's always a surprise. So number one, this faith is different. Number two, this provides an opportunity. It allows you to separate yourself from the hustle and the bustle of the world. You gain access to teaching. You can immerse yourself in this. It's not just one more thing. It is the thing. You know, if you, if you want to get good at basketball, you immerse yourself in it. You want to play the clarinet, you immerse yourself in it. Mark 6, verse 31 says, Jesus says, come with me away for a while. Come away with me for a while. Get into the word of God and the gospel. You get access to teachers. You get access to teaching from the scriptures. It provides an opportunity. Number three, the word katecheo comes right out of the Bible in Luke 1, verse 4. It's a Greek word. And this is a word that means you start to agree with it, what is sounded down into your ears from God. You kind of want to do that, right? It takes time to learn how to do this. So this word itself represents a necessary paradigm shift, even in our Lutheran congregations. Our faith isn't just about learning a body of knowledge and getting an 83% on a quiz. It's about formation and training. We formalize this training for one year in the catechumenate, but our goal is lifelong catechesis, lifelong agreement with God and his word, lifelong study of the living and the active word, and lifelong rejoicing in the shock and the comfort of the gospel. Number four, we didn't invent this process. It was the process in the early church. Their context was polytheism, so the worship of many gods, and pantheism, looking to the God in themselves. It's a crazy environment, right? Do you think it would be easy for somebody to get out of that fleshly pattern of religion after maybe just a luncheon and a tour of the campus? Nope, it's going to take time. Detox even, where you can lose your orange pill bottles. You, we just develop these self-destructive cycles of idolatry to ourselves, and it's going to take time to lose that. The catechumen, it provides us time to properly address people's concerns, their problems, their doubts, their fears, and in the context of healthy and safe relationships, where there isn't judgment, but there's care, concern, and guidance. Number five, the basic, simple, awesome teachings of the prophetic and apostolic faith are taught to those training. You will learn the Ten Commandments and their role in our life today. You will learn the Apostles' Creed and the biblical foundations of that confession. You will learn to pray from Jesus himself in the Lord's Prayer. You can get a new identity, not one you give yourself in the confusion of this age, but one that comes down from a Lord who was raised from the grave to resurrect you with, with him through his death and resurrection in your baptism. You will actually learn how to have healthy relationships through the confession of sin and the forgiveness of sin. You will learn where Jesus stays for his church in this cold and loveless age through his forgiving, life-restoring, unifying gifts, where he promises to be for his church until he comes again in glory. But this is not a dump and dash. This is not graduate and evaporate. This is life. To know and believe where Jesus stays for us everlastingly in his church through his word and his miracles from the Bible we call the sacraments. You've got to get here. Number six, for any person in our culture who hasn't heard about the teachings of Jesus and then they start learning them and end up being baptized, there's going to be a battle. How many people in their 30s or their 20s haven't even gotten one straight word of God or heard about what Jesus actually did for them. You think it's going to be easy when one who has been in darkness or dead in or trespasses in sin starts studying 
getting into the word, preparing for baptism, and then the defining moment of their life comes and they're baptized, it's going to be a battle. There's a switch up of allegiances. Devil, world, and flesh, which are, are actually our deadly enemies, according to the biblical faith. They once liked us when we were in the darkness, but after baptism, they are going to oppose us. Once we're in Christ, the allegiance switches and the work of the triune God, where he causes us to be reborn in baptism, will be opposed. So we prepare people in advance for this fierce battle. And I assure you, with the Lord on your side, his holy word, the joy of the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, you can stare down these enemies every single day knowing that God is for you. Who can be against you? Number seven, we trust God to do everything in the catechumenate through his word. God's word does what it promises and literally does all the work for us in this process. We are there, we are, we're reading, we're asking, discussing, teaching, challenging one another, but fellowship in the kingdom of God is created, forced, and celebrate, celebrated as God does his great and wondrous work through his life-giving, life-recreating, life-restoring word. He does it all. You just have to get there. It starts on the day of Pentecost every year, which is usually in the time of the month of May, and it runs through four phases. Exploration, which is taught by Dr. Dan Langenbeck. The historic one-year lectionary readings are used, which go all the way back to the third century. Then there's the phase of separation, where I teach the catechism, which comes right out of the Bible. And you learn how to study the word in transition, the third phase. You learn to prepare for baptism in that phase. You learn how to pray. We teach you how to live as a Christian during that third phase as you prepare for baptism. And then there's the fourth phase, which is incorporation, where you start to learn living in and by the gifts of Christ himself so that you learn to live for others, love others, and serve others as God in Christ has served you. You've got to get there. No matter how messed up your life is, you got to get there. Jesus can change it all. Think you're too good for this process? You're in worse trouble. You've got to get there. Be there, study with us, rejoice with us, and uh, prepare for the greatest gifts that come to you from Jesus himself.